This is episode 108 of Zen and the Art of Real Estate Investing with my guest, Laura Sides. Laura is new to this game, but she's been on a rampage since the pandemic. She's been flipping, doing short-term and mid-term rentals. Laura is a former teacher, turned stay-at-home mom, turned real estate investor with her whole family. Laura, welcome to the show. Hi, Jonathan. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no, I'm excited to talk to you. And I think this is a great episode for everybody, but especially for newer investors, because this is only 2.5 years in for you, right? Yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah, great. So I want to start in one place and then we'll go back to the journey and how you found it. But why was it so important for you to involve your whole family, especially your kids in the process of real estate investing as you got going? So at the very beginning of this, we were kind of like very early mid pandemic and my family and I were in Florida and I started reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, wow, there's so much more to just education and learning than what I was taught in school. And at that time, we were homeschooling because of the pandemic, our kindergartner. So we had kindergarten, <laughs> pre-K and like two years old. And I remember thinking like, I can teach them so much more than just what I'm teaching them from these textbooks, mm. which even at that young age, I don't know what sparked it in me, but I remember reading the quotes to my husband while we're in Florida. I'm like, we got to use our money to make money, babe. And we're going to show the kids how to do it too. And yeah, I love uh, it. Yeah, we came back and we bought our first flip <laughs> and then we put them all to work. So it was important mm. to show them that Yes, the education piece was really important, you know, math and reading, but there's a whole nother world out here. Let's talk a little bit about authenticity as it relates to investors and, you know, Instagram or any social media, because what I found, and obviously I found you looking around on Instagram and I was like, wow, you, you seem completely genuine and you're willing to take everybody along with the ride, whether you really like you don't have 50 years of experience. Why was it so important to you to be authentic about your journey? And how do you think that can help others? So I think about six months before, about six months before I started my sides investing Instagram page, I was following on my just my personal Instagram. And like you said, there was just a mix of authentic people and then people I'd picked up along the way. Yeah. And I'm like, it's time for me to start my own page. And then once I just funneled it to people that I really connected with and could learn from their journey and be inspired by, that really supercharged what I was doing because then I was just seeing the real and um, like really learning from just those like 30 second clips of what they were sharing. And it was important for me to start that so that I could share it with other people, even though I didn't know what I was doing, right? I think I started it just when I was finishing my first flip. So that's really not chronicled on there. But I was like, I've learned and been inspired by other people doing it from the ground up. Like, why not share too? Yeah, but I bet now you would go back and share that first flip when at the time it was like, oh, well, I, who am I to be sharing this? But now, you know, like, no, it can really help people because you found people on there like, wow, look at those mistakes that can help you avoid those mistakes. 100% agree. Yeah, I wish I would have shared through that. But I think my nerves didn't allow me to like I didn't have enough belief in myself yet that I and my husband's even said to me, um, and I respect his opinion, right? But he's like, what business do you have telling other people what <laughs> what's going on? Right. And I said, it's because it helped me so much. It was so inspiring to me that like, I don't, I'm not if I were to go back, uh, if I in five years from now, if I were to go back and try and retell my journey, I don't think I would I don't think I would remember everything that that it took to get me where I'm going. But yeah, I think taking what you learned from what you were getting out of watching investors, because really Instagram is the thing that really helped you with Rich Dad Poor Dad to really get off the sidelines and say, hey, as a family, we can do this. Absolutely. Between between that book and Instagram and just being able to connect. You can instantly, you see all the posts online, right? About like putting yourself in a room of bigger people than you. We, as a stay at home mom, I can't always do that. I can't fly out to conferences and do those things because our kids are so young still. Yeah. Whereas when I get on my sides investing Instagram, I'm instantly walking into a room full of other people I can have a real estate investing conversation with that I can bounce ideas off of and that I can share you know, insights with. And that has been really critical to my journey for sure. 
Yeah. And I, I think, you know, being a stay at home mom can also be kind of like lonely. You know, you feel like, well, you know, you don't have a quote real job, even though it's obviously the hardest job in the world. But like people are looking at like, you know, you don't have a community wherever it's just like, oh, you're at the pickup line. <laughs> you know, yeah, that that's like the thing. And I know from doing it, it during those years. But this this kind of journey that you took is something that now when you share it, it's like it can become something different than it was before. You're absolutely right. So I am an extrovert to the extreme. So coming home with my kids felt right in my heart. And I really love that. But I definitely had this feeling like there's there can be more than this. And when we started doing that first flip, I remember thinking, like feeling like I'm coming back to life. Like I just I have like relit the fire. Right. I enjoyed working with adults, seeing a project through collaborating, um, involving my kids in it because I love them. They are a huge part. But then I also felt like I'm teaching them more than just ABCs. (laughs) Yeah, that's a really important life lesson, too, because I think, you know, being a stay at home parent sometimes feels like you almost feel bad about yourself for wanting to do more. Like somehow that's against the kids. It's like, well, no, this is, this is fun, but I, I I'd like something that's like, you know, for me also. And then you were able to involve them in the flip too, which I think is really cool. Oh, it's been great. It's been great for all of us. And just their understanding of what we're, it's a, what we're doing and they feel happy and excited and, you know, pride in what we're doing. They knew I was coming here today and they're like, you're doing a podcast. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's interesting because you're finding even on your first investment that the magic of relationships is what places you in this. And now as you've moved forward, has that continued to be an important part of your journey? I think some new investors think like, oh, well, you know, I'm just trying to get a deal. But you weren't trying to get a deal. You bumped into your neighbor and then your other neighbor is a painter and like, wow, this is all working great. But it's probably because you're good. You said you're high extrovert. (laughs) So you're building relationships in the neighborhood and like, oh, wait, now, look, these are really starting to help out. I absolutely love that piece of of this is the relationship building with the smaller contractors in our community. And then we just get on a text, right? Hey, guys, I bought another flip. Uh, I'm closing this state. Can we get in there? Because that's our big, probably my biggest question when I'm, when other people are saying like, I've always wanted to flip a house, but I'm worried about the contractors, right? And I'm like, just be friendly and kind. Yeah. Tell them this is what you're going to do. And you pay them when they want to be paid and be really ultra responsive and communicative and a nice person, right? I've never, I'll show up with a tray of hoagies or yeah. uh, drinks or whatever, and just like have the conversation and and treat you like you are, because you are a part of the team. I can't be successful if you're not successful. And I want them to feel really appreciated. And I think that they, and now usually if I tell them I have a flip, they'll bump me right to the front of their line, which is great. So it's just been, because I'm easy to work with. I'm going to pay them as soon as they're done. And that, yeah. that's been great. That's great ad- yeah, but great advice, too, on the team, though. I, I I have a list of providers who all they work on my house. So when I refer them out or I do a flip, like I know that's exactly what they're doing. Um, again, over time, sometimes the relationships still don't work out. Not everything stays perfect, you know, when you go to volume, but you keep yeah. doing the same thing. You just build a new relationship and you want to have people that you can text and get answers from instead of trying to work with a larger company. Although sometimes that works as well. Sometimes you just need kind of like pros to come in and, and just do it. But I prefer what you're doing as well. The, the, because then, like you said, you can go make that text, have someone swing by and give you an estimate in advance before you even need to do anything to decide, is this even worth it? You know, with, you know, maybe structural problems or something like that. It's been great. That was probably what you just said was probably one of the most surprising things to me that how they perform on one job isn't how they're going to perform on every job. And I was super surprised that like this has been a huge learning experience for me because this is all new. And um, I was surprised how disappointed I was like, man, I thought we had a good thing going here. Why would you mess this up? (laughs)